Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another modern gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at the Dice Forge or Dice Factory deck, which is a colorless ramp slash combo deck featuring a lot of artifacts with charge counters. And one of the centerpieces of the deck is Core Tapper, a two mana artifact creature that can tap to put a charge counter on target artifact. And we can also sacrifice Core Tapper to put two charge counters on target artifact instead. And then we've got the full play set of Surge Node, which enters the battlefield with six charge counters on it. We can pay a mana, tap the Surge Node to move a charge counter from Surge Node onto another artifact. And then we've got a bunch of mana ramp artifacts that work with these charge counters. One of them is Everflowing Chalice, which has multi kicker two. So the Everflowing Chalice will enter the battlefield with a charge counter on it for each time it was kicked, and then taps to add colorless mana to our mana pool for each charge counter on the Everflowing Chalice. So sometimes we'll just play Everflowing Chalice for zero mana, and then instead of using the multi-kicker, we can move counters onto it with the Surge Node or the Core Tapper, and that can allow for some very explosive turns, especially if we sacrifice a Core Tapper to put two charge counters on an artifact. So that can allow us to add a ton of mana. And then what are we doing with all this mana? Well, there's a few ways our deck can win. One of them is just by playing Carnegrade Curator, which can minus two to search up an artifact from our sideboard. And there we can find a number of win conditions. One of them is also the Mycosynth Lattice, which can shut the opponent out of the game, thanks to the passive from Carnegrade Creator as well. And then another way to win is just by kind of going off. We've got a lot of card draw engines in the deck, the main one being Mystic Forge, which is a four mana artifact that says we can look at the top card of our library anytime. And then we can cast the top card of our library if it's an artifact card or a colorless non land card. So outside of our lands, we can cast every card of the top of our deck. And then we can also tap Mystic Forge and pay a life to exile the top card of our library. So that way we can maybe still cast the top card of our library if we hit a pocket of lands, for example. And then the way their deck really starts going off is if we can find a Paradox Engine, which is a legendary artifact for five mana that says, whenever we cast a spell, untap all non-land permanents we control. Now, if we combine Paradox Engine with Mystic Forge and a bunch of these mana ramp artifacts that uh, can generate quite a bit of mana, then we can easily go through most of our deck just by tapping cards like Chalice to add mana, then casting a spell on top of our deck with the Mystic Forge, and then untapping all these mana ramp artifacts thanks to the Paradox Engine when we cast a spell. And then the fact that the Mystic Forge itself also untaps with the Paradox Engine means that we have a lot of control over the top of our library so that we don't hit a pocket of lands and kind of get stuck. And then once we make a bunch of mana, and basically draw our entire deck. We can just uh, play a big walking ballista, for example, where we can shoot the opponents and kill them on the spot. Or again, we can use Karn the Great Creator to search up a win condition from the sideboard, including a walking ballista as well. So the deck does a lot of uh, powerful things if it goes off. And then in the mana base, of course, we also have the uh, Tron lands, which can also add a ton of mana. And we've got Expedition Map to help us assemble Tron. So let me go over the entire deck here, starting out with some of the X mana cards or zero drops. So we've got the full play set of Everflowing Chalice. Then the other mana ramp artifact that works with charge counters is Astral Cornucopia, a worse version of the Everflowing Chalice, but it does make colored mana, which is uh, not very relevant for our deck. Then of course, we've got our Walking Ballista, which is one of our win conditions. And also two copies of Mishra's Bauble, just as kind of a zero mana cantripping artifact. So it's uh, quite nice if we can find it with Mystic Forge, just as a free card we can uh, play off the top of our deck. Then we've got the full place of Expedition Map, which can search up any land from our library. So that plays well with all the Urzatron lands, of course. If we have two of them, then we can complete a Tron and then add a ton of colorless mana. Then we've got our full place of Surge Nodes, which can move counters onto our Everflowing Chalice or Cornucopia. And we also have two copies of a Ratchet Bomb, which also works with charge counters, kind of like a Colorless Engineered Explosives or Blast Zone, which is also part of our mana base. So we can tap the Ratchet Bomb to put a charge counter on it. And if we tap Ratchet Bomb and sacrifice it, we can destroy each non-land permanent with convert mana cost equal to the number of charge counters on a Ratchet Bomb. So we can quickly ratchet up the number of charge counters on a Ratchet Bomb if we have Core Tapper or Surge Node to get rid of bigger permanents as well. Otherwise, a great way to clear tokens or zero mana artifacts from the opponent. Although we do have to be careful there as well, since we have a lot of zero cost artifacts ourselves. Then we have our full play set of Core Tappers, which can add a ton of charge counters 
Bridges, which translates into a ton of mana. Then we have two copies of Ensnaring Bridge in the main deck, one in the sideboard as well, to help us against creature decks, since we don't have a lot of removal in the deck, so Ensnaring Bridge can help us keep opposing creatures at bay. Then the full playset of Karn the Great Creator, which is a great toolbox card in this deck, since we can search up any number of artifact cards out of the sideboard, including a lot of silver bullet hate cards for certain matchups. And of course also just turns into a win condition if it can grab a walking ballista once we have a ton of mana. Then we have the full playset of Mystic Forge, which is our main card draw engine in the deck, allowing us to cast most of our deck once we have a few of these mana generating artifacts. And uh, then of course the ability is also quite relevant, especially in combination with our two copies of Paradox Engine, allowing us to untap Mystic Forge over and over again. And then finally four copies of Ugin, the Ineffable, which is also quite synergistic in our deck, making colorless spells we cast cost two generic mana less to cast, which is also quite relevant since all our permanents are colorless. And that's also great if we have a Mystic Forge in place, since then it's easier to cast multiple spells off the top of our deck. And then we can use the plus one to make a 2-2 token that can also provide some card advantage. And the minus three can destroy target permanent if that's one or more colors. So it gives us access to a bit of removal as well. And then looking at our mana base, besides the 12 Tron lands, we also have some one-off utility lands. One Seagate Wreckage, which can draw us extra cards if we're empty-handed. Inventor's Fair can be sacrificed to search up any artifact in our deck, often searching up Mystic Forge or maybe Paradox Engine. Then we have a Ghost Quarter to destroy opposing lands, and we also have a Crucible of Worlds in the sideboard that we can search up with Karn to keep getting our lands back from the graveyard, and that in combination with Ghost Quarter can completely decimate the opponent's mana base. Then we also have three copies of Blast Zone, which can also be used as a way to destroy opposing permanents. So pretty similar to the Ratchet Bomb, although Core Tamper and Surge Node only let us move charge counters onto artifacts, so we can't put any extra counters onto the Blast Zone. And then two basic wastes, so we can search those up if uh, the opponent is trying to use cards like Field of Ruin or Path of Exile, so we still have some uh, lands to search up. And then taking a look at our sideboard, we've got basically four cards that aren't artifacts in the sideboard, and those are all removal spells, two copies of Dismember, and two copies of Spatial Contortion to help against the creature matchups. And then all the other cards we can search up with Karn. So we've got Walking Ballista, which can be a win condition. We've got Tormod Script against Graveyard decks, and it costs zero mana, so we can uh, play Karn a Great Creator, minus search up Tormod Script and play it right away. We've got a Pithing Needle against uh, activated abilities like Planeswalkers. Liquid Metal Coating is kind of a smaller version of the Mycosynth Lattice, can turn opposing permanents into artifacts, and with Karn the Great Creator out, the opponent will be unable to use them. Then we've got a Spell Sky that can redirect all sorts of things, including enchantments, pump spells, so great against Bogles and Infect as well. We've got a Torpor Orb to shut down Enter the Battlefield abilities from uh, creatures, so great against a deck like Humans, for example. We've got a Crucible Worlds to go with our Ghost Quarter and Inventor's Fair to provide a ton of advantage. We've got Ensnaring Bridge as a way to search it up with Karn to shut down creature decks. Witchbane Orb is great against burn decks, Valakut decks trying to kill us with uh, Valakut the Molten Pinnacle, for example. We've got a Mycosynth Lattice, which is a main combo with Karn the Great Creator. If the board is stable, then a Mycosynth Lattice with Karn in play will win the game on the spot most of the time. And then we also have a Worm Coil Engine as an extra win condition that can also gain a ton of life, and a great tool against mid-range decks as well. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play. And we've got a one-lander. It does feature Chalice plus double Core Tapper, but uh, without a second land we don't really get to do much. With a second land this hand would be quite good, since then we get to dump a bunch of counters onto the Chalice with Core Tappers and ramp into Ugin, but as is, I think we'll mulligan. Alright, this is better. We've got the two lands, a Core Tapper and a Chalice, plus the Surge Notes. So I think this is a keep, and then... Probably bottom the Ratchet Bomb. We've got the mana to ramp into Ugin, so I do want some sort of payoff card. And then turn one we get to play a Surge Node. Turn two, maybe Everflowing Chalice or play Core Tapper first, that also works. Up against Urza's Mine, so looks like our point is on Mono Green Tron. Alright, so let's see who can make more mana. Now of course Ugin the Ineffable, not great against Classic Tron, as we can blow up their Colorless Permanence. I can play Everflowing Chalice for one, and then use Surge Nodes to put an extra counter on it, or I can play Core Tapper first, and then maybe play Astral Cornucopia for a zero, in case I kill the Core Tapper somehow, I at least get to put some counters on it. That seems slightly better. Now, if I do sacrifice a Core Tapper, 
put two counters on the cornucopia. I can still play Chalice for one. I think I would rather wait. Don't expect to face a ton of removal out of the Tron deck, especially game one. But you never know, they might have a dismember. Chromatic Star for green. And a second Urza's Mind, so no turn three Tron at least. That's good news. Alright, another Surge node. Play a Surge node. And say go. And next turn it's time for Ugin. Alright, triple mind, so opponent's pretty unlucky here, pretty far from assembling Tron. And expedition map. So we'll use the surge nodes first and then play Ugin. I think I probably missed out on one counter from the surge nodes last turn. I'm sure I could have sequenced things slightly better. Finds an Urza's power plant and can play this for free thanks to Ugin. So the good news is that we have a ton of mana, we've got an Ugin going. The bad news is that we're not necessarily close to killing the opponents and they've got some powerful cards in their deck that could uh, take over the game at any point. And uh, Karn the Great Creator is definitely one of them since that shuts down all my artifacts. I can just pressure Karn with my creatures at least. So we've got that going for us. And Paradox Engine doesn't do a whole lot, but maybe soon. The fact that they're on the Karn the Great Creator version of Tron definitely makes the matchup a bit harder. Alright, can't play the Paradox Engine since my artifacts don't tap for mana. Of course I could use a Ghost Corridor on the Power Plant, but that will give my opponent green mana to maybe unlock Sylvan Scryings that they have stuck in hand. It's unclear if I should... Uh, Go for it here. Karn minuses. Not sure what that's gonna get. And gets Trinisphere. Fair enough. Makes all my spells more expensive. As everything will cost three essentially. Alright, but uh, we do have the board presence with Ugin. Urza's Tower. So this is plusing. We get to take out Karn. Just in case they have a dismember, I think I'll send two creatures at Karn. And maybe leave the core tapper untapped so we can use the ability once again once Karn is dead. So Karn down. I can sack Expedition Map to get a Inventor's Fair, which seems decent. So let's do that. Seagate Wreckage could also be okay, but I think I just go for the fair. And then we can play it. Sink some mana into our Cornucopia. Sack Inventor's Fair. Get our Mystic Forge. Walking Ballista could also be reasonable. And then in order to play Mystic Forge, I will have to tap the Ghost Quarter because of the Trini Sphere. I think I should probably take them off Tron here to be safe. The best timing for using the Ghost Quarter was probably in their draw step. So they have a higher likelihood of drawing the forest for the turn. But the land does come into play untapped, so can't really deny them the green mana. It's going to be an Ancient Stirrings, which also costs them three mana, so the Trinisphere also affecting the opponent here. Gets an Urza's Tower. Alright, we'll start by plusing Ugin. The Spirit Tokens can attack. And then we get to sink some mana into our artifacts. So Paradox Engine will cost me 3 mana here. Play Mystic Forge, untap all my permanents. And now we're kind of going off. There's a tower on top, we can get rid of that. Not a Mystic Forge, alright. Surge nodes to put more counters on Cornucopia. And on Chalice. Get to use a Core Tapper again. And 
make some mana, play Mystic Forge. This will also untap the Mystic Forge in play, so if I don't want the Core Tapper, I can activate it before drawing it, but I'm fine with the Core Tapper on top. So we get to make an obscene amount of mana. Play Core Tapper. Whoops, forgot to activate Mystic Forge in response here before untapping, but that's fine. There's a Karn, and Karn should lock things up. Play Karn, get Lattice, and that should seal the deal. Or I can just get a Walking Ballista, but Lattice seems easier. Play Lattice, and I'm just going to pass a turn here, I think. Not waste any more time on the clock. Alright, that does it. So we got game one against regular Tron. So, don't have much to really bring in for the matchup. It's all about being as fast as possible. Yeah, there's not a ton of interaction going on. Ratchet Bomb's not great, and Snaring Bridge is not amazing. But there's nothing in the sideboard that I necessarily want to bring in to make room for it. I could main deck Pithing Needle to name, let's say, Karn Liberated from the opponents or one of their other artifacts. So that's an option. Could always main deck the Crucible of Worlds to go with my Ghost Quarter, but we only have the one Ghost Quarter, so it's not super likely to work out. So yeah, the only consideration is do I want to main deck maybe a Pithing Needle, so I can have it in my opening hand to name one of their artifacts or Karn, instead of, let's say, Ratchet Bomb, which is... Not that great, to be honest. I think I do. And submit this. Now, of course, I can search up Pithing Needle with Karn, but we've got better things to get, potentially. Alright, this hand has a lot going for it. We've got Chalice plus Surge Note to ramp, double Tron Land if we draw the third one, or Expedition Map, and then Mystic Forge plus Engine to kind of go off in the late game. So yeah, seems like a keep. And then Bobble to Cantrip as well. Opponent does have the turn one map. Just gonna use the bubble now. Opponent's gonna draw a Karn Liberated, so yeah, that's a scary one. Play a Surge node. Say go. So I will be able to play a turn three Mystic Forge at least. Opponent with double mind, so no turn three Tron, that's good. And our own Karn the Great Crater. Expedition map gets Urza's Tower. There it is. And it's going to be a Spyglass. I'll put a counter on it. Alright, put on names Mystic Forge. That's probably the last one I would have named. So I can level up my Chalice. Five mana. Play Paradox Engine. Play Cornucopia. Untaps my two permanents. And that leaves me with three mana, which is... Not enough to cast uh, Mystic Forge. If I still had the Pithing Needle on the sideboard, I could get the uh, Pithing Needle named Karn Liberated, which would be pretty decent. Could also just run out uh, the Mystic Forge here without the Paradox Engine. I guess I'll play Karn. Also shuts off potential Expedition maps for my opponents. And do I just get the Lattice now, or do I get something cheaper in case they somehow deal with my mana or my Karn? Probably still get Lattice, in case I have a, another Pithing Needle type effect. Definitely would have gotten a Pithing Needle if we still had it. Alright, opponent does have Tron, so they will be able to Karn me. And they might just go after the Chalice here. So yeah, kind of punished for boarding in that one Pithing Needle. Alright, they're gonna go after Karn, that's fine too. Now my Lattice doesn't do much. Alright, well, I drew the Pithing Needle, that also works. Surge node the Chalice. So I have 6 mana, so I want to play Paradox Engine first. Then I get to play Needle. Naming Karn Liberated. And then I get to play out my Mystic Forge. Bridge on top, which I can cast.
Alright, that's a land, so now I don't get to use the Mystic Forge to get rid of the tower, sadly. So we have to come at a halt here. But I think I will play a Cornucopia. So I get to make 5 mana, play Cornucopia for 1. Just to have some extra mana in case I deal with my Chalice. And then I guess I get to use a Surge node twice, so we'll do 1 on Chalice and 1 on Cornucopia. Alright, so I've got a lot of mana. I don't think I want to play my Lattice in case my opponent has 4 mana Karn, because then I would shut myself out of the game. So we'll just uh, pass a turn here. So yeah, the Spyglass on uh, Mystic Forge definitely slows down our combo potential. So our opponent has uh, a lot of mana here, thanks to Tron. I was probably better off putting an extra counter on the Cornucopia as opposed to the Chalice to just kind of spread out the counters a bit. It's going to be Ulamog, Exiling, Pithing Needle, and my Blast Zone. Blast Zone, of course, could have also gotten rid of the Spyglass. Ulamog can't attack, but Karn can always solve that issue. So do I want to keep Lattice? I don't think I do. Just get rid of it and keep Double Bridge so Ulamog can start attacking me right away. But yeah, things are about to get pretty ugly. Expedition map on top. So Expedition Map can find me a uh, Inventor's Fair, which can find me a Walking Ballista. So we're starting to get somewhere here. So let's make a bunch of mana. Play a Surge Note first. Only want to shuffle if there's a land on top, basically. Well, Walking Ballista on top. That uh, is pretty good. So we'll untap. Surge Note puts counter on Cornucopia. So maybe I don't need to get the Inventor's Fair after all, and I can just play a tower. Yeah, that seems fair. And I might want to leave two mana up for the Expedition map to shuffle, because that represents a lot of extra mana with these mana artifacts here. So we'll cast this. So X equals 13 here is what I'm going to go with. Untap some permanence. Surge node put counter on Cornucopia. Activate Expedition Map, and get the Inventor's Fair, I suppose. Bubble on top, perfect. So I get to keep making mana. Another artifact on top, so we're kind of doing it. Play Chalice, I think I'm just going to play it for zero here. But I should be able to make uh, quite a bit of mana to sink into the Ballista. So we've got 30 more mana, and we should just have a lethal walking ballista here, as long as I don't misclick. Plus I could always play the ensnaring bridge to untap my artifacts once again. Maybe that's safer here. Just so I don't end up uh, killing my walking ballista and not killing the opponent somehow. Alright, sweet. Managed to fight our way past Green Tron here with our Dice Factory deck onto the next one. Alright, we're on the play. And what about this hand? We have two Tron lands, so if we draw a, an Expedition map or the third Tron land, we're in business. And regardless, I get to play turn 2 Chalice, turn 3 Karn, so I think I'm in. Up against Sunbaked Canyon, so could be burn, but usually expect to see a 1 mana play. So we'll play our Chalice, and say go. Alright, it is going to be a Lightning Bolt end of turn. So just a Creatureless Hand, perhaps. And stuck on one land as well, so that's uh, good for us. So I can play Karn. What does Karn get? I've got a few options. Could just go for the Worm Coil Engine, although we're still a couple turns away from casting it. I could also just play Core Tapper to ramp me into Ugin, and then that gives me... The option of Karn for Worm Coil Engine as well. And then if they do try and kill it, at the very least I can sacrifice it to put some counters on the Chalice. Right, Lava Dart, fair enough. So I could have cast the Karn if I did this right away. But uh, if the Core Tapper somehow survived, then I could have ramped even more. Desperate Ritual. 
what's happening here. For a seasoned pyromancer. And discards Arya of Flame and Arclight Phoenix. Alright, so points going big. Some one mana short of going Ugin into Karn, but Ugin make a token seems fine. And that found an Urza's Tower. And then if Ugin survives, I could even go Karn plus Wormcoil in the same turn. Although there's a good chance my opponent can get back Arclight Phoenix if they can cast three spells. It's gonna be two mana for a Thrill of Possibility. Discarding Seasoned Pyromancer, so seeing a couple new Eldraine cards. And Bolt for the token. So Ugin should be safe unless they want a Lava Dart, which they do. Phoenix comes back, and uh, Ugin is down. Alright. So that was a good turn for the opponents. Although Ensnaring Bridge is pretty decent too. So now I get to Karn for, I think, still Worm Coil. And then... Uh, we get to play Ensnaring Bridge as well. Seems fine. They will still be able to kill my Karn here, but a 6 6 lifelink should stabilize us nicely. Lava Dart on Karn. And a Bedlam Reveler to empty their hand and refuel. Fair enough. And they will take out Karn, deal 5. So we're down to 9. And I was kind of hoping for a cheap spell so we could empty your hand faster, but uh, I guess Blast Zone will have to do. So now the Phoenix and Reveler can't attack. Of course the Worm Coil also can't attack, so it's a bit of a nombo with our bridge. And I am at 9, so I could still get burnt out if my opponent draws a couple burn spells. Now it's just about finding another Karn, and uh, Karn can find Lattice, which should uh, lock up the game. Alright, another Thrill of Possibility. Sacrifices Canyon. And I guess I'll start leveling up the Blast Zone here. Could always destroy my own Ensnaring Bridge at some point if I really want to. I'll just play Cornucopia for three. And say go. So a couple canyons cycled. And we'll put another counter on the blast zone here. Expedition map can complete Tron, so we have all the mana in the world. So Walking Ballista would also be a great top deck at this point. And then I guess we'll start leveling up this other blast soon. So a good one on three, one on four, to maybe blow up the Arclight Phoenix. Don't really feel comfortable blowing up the ensnaring bridge when my opponent can hit me back for potentially more than I can gain with a worm coil. Alright, let's just play tower, say go. Alright, Ugin's a good draw. Finds another ensnaring bridge. Alright, triple phoenix. Ghost quarter. It's plus. Finds walking ballista, so that's something we actually want to somehow kill. So we can unlock it to win the game. No real easy way to do it here, since Ugin can destroy its own spirit tokens. Right, Anamorphos. Not a Phoenix. Chalice. Well, we can play a pretty big Chalice here. How about a Chalice for 13? It's probably enough. I guess I miscounted. Could have been 14. I guess we haven't played land for a turn. So now I get to crack Expedition Map. And I guess we still have some nice utility lands to get here. So you get Wreckage or Inventor's Fair. I guess Inventor's Fair will do the job. And then I can uh, search up either a Mystic Forge or a Walking Ballista, although I guess the Walking Ballista's exiled. 
So it's probably going to be Mystic Forge. Can play that. Karn on top, which we can play. And that should seal the deal. Minus to get Lattice. And my opponent will be unable to cast any more spells. Alright, we got there, so... How do we want a sideboard? They didn't play many early threats, but they might still easily have Monastery Swift Spears or Soul Scar Mages, in which case I want to Spatial Contortions. Uh, and Snaring Bridge, I'm happy to have two in the main one in the sideboard to search up. Anything else? I could main deck the Worm Coil engine instead of having it in the sideboard. Uh, Spell Skite could also potentially be main decked to redirect some burn spells or as an early blocker. Although redirecting a burn spell only saves us one life, essentially, if it's a Lightning Bolt. And then uh, Tormod Scripts, I don't think I want in the main, even though my opponent has a bit of graveyard interaction with the Raveler and the Phoenix. Torpor Orb could also be fine to stop Raveler from drawing cards. But there's also nothing like terrible in uh, the main deck that I want to take out. Could see shaving a Paradox Engine and maybe shave an Ugin as well, which is a bit pricey to make room for the Spatial Contortions and keep the deck low to the ground. Yeah, this seems fine. Which Bane Orb also card we might end up uh, searching up to protect us from lethal burn spells once we get an Ensnaring Bridge in play. But of course, after sideboard, we can expect our opponent to have some interaction for our artifacts as well, so we can't rely on them as much. All right, so we're on the draw with a reasonable hand. Uh, we're missing an Everflowing Chalice or Astral Cornucopia to make use of the Surge Node. But I have Surge Node into Contortion and then Ratchet Bomb has a bit of interaction. All right, there's a Chalice, perfect. So we'll lead with the Surge Node. And then next turn I can play Chalice for one and use a Surge Node to put an extra counter on it. So I'll say go. It's going to be a braid for the chalice. That's unfortunate. At least I didn't waste a charge counter from the surge node. Desperate ritual for Aria of Flame. Yep. Do have the ratchet bomb to deal with it. And thanks to the surge nodes, we can kind of speed up the rate at which ratchet bomb ratchets up. So yeah, I think I'll just pass a turn here and then I can uh, Charge up the Ratchet Bomb and put an extra counter on it with the Surge Node. There's a Thrill of Possibility. Discarding another Thrill. So Ratchet Bomb up to two. Ugin in the draw. So I get to play Expedition Map. I just want to hit my land drop here. Like I could wait until I find a second Troll Land. But I would rather not miss my land drop. And then we will probably get a Tron land regardless. Could also get Inventor's Fair to start gaining a bit of life. That seems reasonable too. And that can maybe eventually get a Mystic Forge. Yeah, given that I'm not close to Tron, I guess that's fine. I could blow up the Aria of Flame right now. Could also just play Surge Notes so I can start gaining life with the Inventor's Fair. Let them have the Aria for a turn. I guess an Aria with one counter is not too scary. So they can probably have it for now. Right, bolts me. The risk, of course, is that they draw another a braid to kill my Ratchet Bomb, and I'll regret it. But let's say they have a second Aria of Flame. I'm also delaying that for an extra turn here. All right, Reveler for the redraws. Discarded and empty the Warrants, which uh, Ratchet Bomb also answers nicely. Lava Darts, pretty good with the Aria of Flame. And they're gonna flash it back. Try and get in as much damage as possible. Alright, let's uh, untap. Probably should have uh, leveled up the Ratchet Bomb end of turn there. Up to three, so we don't have to waste any charge counters. Paradox Engine doesn't do a whole lot since I don't have any mana artifacts in play. So the play is probably just gonna be to blow up the Ratchet Bomb. And say go. Leaving up Spatial Contortion doesn't kill Raveler, but maybe Hardcast Phoenix we can kill. There we go. And Karn the Great Creator is pretty decent too. So what do I want to search for? 
just a worm coil engine again. I'm one land away from casting it, so presumably I'll be able to find it in time. Yeah, worm coil seems fine. But it's got one card in hand, five lands in play. Eh, bobble for the cantrip. So I could play Bobble, then sack Inventor's Fair to get, let's say, an Everflowing Chalice that I can start ramping up with the Surge Nodes, but I'm probably better off just keeping my lands and casting my 6 drops. So let's do that instead. And now the Inventor's Fair also starts gaining me a bit of life. I can Bobble the opponent here to take a look. Arclight Phoenix will be the draw. All right. And a Seasoned Pyromancer makes a couple tokens end of turn. Draw another Karn. Karn could also just plus on the Paradox engine to have a 5-5 blocker. It's gonna be the Hardcast Phoenix. So we're gonna take 8. So we'll need to draw that land soon here. Alright, there we go. Play Worm Coil. Now I'm still vulnerable to the Arclight Phoenix. If my opponent has a Lightning Bolt, we're dead. But none of my other plays can uh, save me. Alright, so hopefully no burn spells. Just a land. Phoenix attacks. Down to three. And we get to untap. And we kind of get to give Worm Coil Engine Vigilance thanks to the Paradox Engine, which is kind of nice. So we'll attack first. And then play Ugin. And probably just want to destroy the Arclight Phoenix. Could also just plus, make an extra blocker for the ground creatures. And minusing is kind of bad if they have a one damage effect to finish off Ugin. And if they keep sending their Arclight Phoenix at Ugin, I think we'll be fine. Considering I have this Karn in hand still. Yeah, it's going to be Pyretic Ritual. Also, the downside of trying to kill Phoenix is if they just get both copies back. From the graveyard, we didn't really accomplish much. It's gonna be a lava dart on Ugin. And they can flash it back to finish him off in combination with Arclight Phoenix. Alright, so they are gonna finish off Ugin and then probably hit me for three. That's fine. So we'll untap, gain some life. Urza's mine enables Tron, so Worm Coil gets to attack. And what do I want to get with Karn? Lattice isn't great since they have double Phoenix in play. Maybe just get a Walking Ballista here. Sure. Alright. And yep, opponent has to scoop it up. Ballista could kill both copies of Arclight Phoenix. Next turn I can minus, get Lattice, and seal the deal. Alright, sweet. Managed to beat Mono Red Phoenix. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. And don't think we can keep a uh, no lander here, so we'll go to six. Alright, we've got a one lander with a surge node and a core tamper, but no Everflowing Chalice or Astral Chloronocopia. So it's actually still not all that great. So I think we'll go to five. All right, this is probably the best we've got so far. Still not great. No real synergy with the Cornucopia, but I guess just playing a bridge on three and then a Mystic Forge on turn four could be good enough in some matchups. So I think I'm bottoming the Walking Ballista and the Cornucopia. Could also keep Cornucopia in case I find Surge Node or Core Tapper and bottom the bridge. I think I'm just gonna bottom Ballista and Cornucopia here. That way we just need to draw land for the sand to be functional. And it kind of helps when you mulligan with Ensnaring Bridge, because you'll have fewer cards in hand. Alright, let's uh, play Blast Zone and pass. Up against Spire Bluff Canal, so this could be Storm, in which case the bridge doesn't do much. I think I'm playing Chalice for one instead of Bridge. Resolves. And then next turn I can play any of my 4-drops. Peer through Depths. So this could also be the 
Lotus Fields version, Twiddle Storm, although Desperate Ritual kind of implies Normal Storm. Alright, so what can Karn get to mess up my opponent here? I could get a Tormod script to maybe mess with the graveyard. I could get a Witchbane Orb to protect from a lethal grape shot, although they might have a bounce effect for it somewhere in their main deck. And then hope that we're not dead next turn. Of course I could also counter this. Gets remanded. It's gonna be Baral. Untapped Steam Vent, so my opponent's gonna start going for it here. Ritual into Gifts Ungiven, one mana floating, so I think this is pretty much the win. But uh, we'll let my opponent do their thing. So Karn getting Graveyard Hates might have kept me alive if Karn resolved. His opponent gets two Rituals, Mana Morphos, and Pass in Flames. I guess I'll put the Rituals in the Graveyard here. Electromancer, all right. Well, I guess we're not dead yet, so that's a good thing. But uh, I'm definitely gonna die next turn, unless I play Karn and uh, get some Graveyard Hate here. But that's only a temporary solution. Let's get the Crypt and play it. And say go. And if my opponent goes and tries to cast Past in Flames, I can uh, sacrifice my Tormal Script. Gonna force the issue right away. They do still have a Manamorphose to get back. And another Gifts. Alright. So they had the redundant Gifts and Given. Gets two Rituals, Manamorphose, Grape Shots. So I guess I'll put Manamorphose and Grape Shot in the graveyard. But the Passing Flames has yet to resolve. So now they will be able to Gifts again. And I'm pretty sure that means we're dead. So they cast both Rituals before Passing Flames resolves, and a third Gifts Ungiven. Alright, we'll let our opponent go off here, but they're just gonna cast a bunch more Rituals, cast a bunch more Gifts and Givens, and eventually cast a couple of Grape Shots and storm us out. So now they get to cast everything from the Graveyard. Yes, yeah, Storm seems like a rough matchup. They kind of goldfish faster than we do. Do have some removal spells in the sideboard we get to bring in to kill Baral and Goblin Electromancer. Because of course without those, they won't be able to go off as quickly. And there's the first Grape Shots. In game one there was a chance that they didn't have a bounce spell for the Witchbane Orb, and then they would have to kill with uh, combat damage. But after sideboard they'll definitely pick up at least one Echoing Truth to bounce the Witchbane Orb. So Spatial Contortion and Dismember are coming in. What do we take out? So Ratchet Bomb can potentially answer Empty the Warrens. Ensnaring Bridge is pretty poor. It's just for the Empty the Warrens and they're one ones so I would have to be Empty Handed. So I could see cutting all the Ensnaring Bridges, I could see keeping in one in the main deck. Ratchet Bomb is probably just better, since it can also answer the mana creatures. And then two more cuts. Could shave a couple Ugins, which are pretty slow. Could shave, let's say, the Mishra's Bauble, which is pretty replaceable. Those are probably my options. I think I have to keep in the Paradox Engine to try and combo off with a Mystic Forge, because I can't let my opponent really untap. And then I think I want to keep the uh, Witchbane Orb in the sideboard to search up with Karn the Great Creator. Same with the uh, Tormod Script, so there's nothing I really want to have in my main deck. Maybe I'll just shave one Ugin and one Mishra's Bobble, kind of split the difference here. All right, we'll try this. We'll be on the play, and we're looking at a reasonable hand. We've got uh, Core Tamper plus Chalice into a couple Mystic Forges, and then two Tron Lands in case I pick up a third or a, an Expedition map. And then I'm probably going to be forced to play Chalice for zero alongside the Core Tamper. So that if they do have a Lightning Bolt, for example, I still get to put some counters on Chalice. Second Core Tapper. There's Baral. Alright, this member is a timely top deck. Definitely start by doing this. 
So how badly do I want to get this Mystic Forge in play? I can probably wait a turn and just play another Core Tapper for now. And dismember Baral before they untap. And say go. Alright, they have a backup Electromancer. Inventor's Fair gains a life. Another Chalice. So we'll start by playing the Mystic Forge. And then I can always uh, play the second Chalice and sack the Core Tampers to put counters on this if I need access to more mana. They could, of course, have a Remand here. There it is. So. Sack a Core Tamper to get Mystic Forge in play, is that worth it? I think so. Still have the other one. But it will be tapped out. Surge node on top, I don't think I want to get rid of it with the Mystic Forge, even though there's a small chance I could find a zero mana card. Yeah, opponent's gonna kick things off with a Mana Morphose. Second Mana Morphose, which generates one mana. And draws a card. A ritual, so could be dead here. Not a ritual. Second Electromancer. Pieces, alright. Pieces is not gifts and given. So what did my opponent reveal? So Grape Shot and Electromancer went to the graveyard. They picked up Empty the Warrants. And rebuild as well. Well, this rebuild is going to be pretty effective. Yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty brutal. Bouncing all my artifacts. All my hard work. So... Now do I want to get rid of the Surge node? Probably. And just hope to find a Tron piece to assemble Tron. Alright, not the one I needed. So we're set back to the Stone Ages. My opponent gets to empty the Warrens. And make uh, an army of goblins. So I'll need a Ratchet Bomb off the top, pretty much. But we know we're drawing a Tron land. So I think that means we're dead. Yeah, don't think I have any outs. Opponent even uh, generously did not attack with the Electromancer. Don't think that's gonna matter. Core Tamper's one blocker, still taking 20 damage here. And there's nothing I can find with a Mystic Forge off the top to save me. Alright. GG's. I guess I get to take a look at my next card here. Expedition map, so we would have gotten to complete Tron, but uh, a little bit too late. Alright, Storm seems like a rough matchup for the deck. We got close to having a competitive game in game 2 here, but uh, Rebuild was definitely a nice one out of the sideboard. Alright, I think that's gonna wrap things up for today. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.